Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comment video. We're going to be talking about Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 once again. It's quite late here in the UK. By the time this goes up, it's going to be almost midnight. But I really wanted to put this out because this is information straight from AMD. This is official documentation. This is official press slides. So I figure you're probably going to be quite interested in it. Um, and it gives us a slew of information on the Polaris 10, Polaris 11 cards, which would be the 470, the 480, and of course the 460, including a lot of information regarding the performance of the cards, and also stuff like the amount of compute units in the 460, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So with that said, let's start. So, Polaris 10 does have 36 compute units, we've known that for some time, but the Polaris 11 has 16 which just over half the amount. Uh, bus width is also half, 128 bit, but we don't know clocks at the moment. Rather interestingly, they do specify that it's up to 2.8 times performance per watt. Now, the reason that's quite interesting is to get those numbers, they're utilizing a comparison GPU of the R9 270X. As a slight aside, you might remember back when AMD first revealed these um, in Computex, and they did say, uh, I can't, I think it was Rajak had already said that to get those numbers, it was a combination of the reduction to 14 nm and also AMD specific technologies, um, for example, various improvements in the efficiency of the GPUs, and that's how they got those uh, 2.8 times performance per watt. One thing which did strike me is first in a family of solutions. Now, you only have to read that and start doing some basic uh, thoughts and, um, and speculation and say to yourself, well, would that mean that we're going to see the RX 480X? Which is a bit of an unwieldy name, but still I grant you. Or will we see the 485... 475? The 465? Do you get where I'm going with this? Or are they not counting the fact that they're going to have the 490s, which possibly could be Vega? I don't know. It's just a bit weird. It's a bit of an ambiguous statement, and I hope AMD clarify on that at some point very soon. Much, of course, was made during the press slides regarding the virtual reality is for everyone, which is fine. I have no problem with that. My main qualm with those statements is still virtual reality headsets are still quite expensive. That's not to say that... It's not a benefit to have cheaper VR headsets, or rather be able to power uh, virtual reality headsets for cheaper, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a while before the headset displays themselves become cheap enough to where the average customer can probably afford them on top of the rest of the PC. Still, it's a good thing that the price is coming down to be able to power them, and let's face it, good virtual reality experiences require an awful lot of GPU juice. So even if you can just run a regular monitor, whether it's 1080p or 1440p, with higher frame rates, that's absolutely good for the industry. AMD also decided to release some benchmarks, but there is a thing that's really quite interesting. If you read through the notes, they published which version of the driver that they were using, and in this case, it's Crimson Edition 16.1.1. Now, if you mosey on over to AMD's official website, uh, this is of the time of recording, so obviously if you were to do this in a couple of weeks' time, it might be different. But at the time of recording, the current version of, of the driver is not that. The current version of the driver is 16.6.1, so obviously it's a little older, which means that performance may have improved since AMD did release these uh, drivers. So, But anyway, besides all that... The performance is definitely quite a chunk, a bit, uh, quite a chunk higher. And you can see that, for example, in Overwatch, you're getting around 120 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, that would be on the 470, which is pretty damn bizarre and absolutely crazy. The fact that you can get that that level of performance. So, what does all of this mean? Well, official benchmarks are usually, in my experience, anyway, of benchmarking. Uh, AMD cards and Nvidia cards to be to be honest pretty accurate in at least what they give what the hardware performs like it's usually fairly accurate I'm not saying that it's you get it 
dead on because obviously driver revisions and they might have a slightly different clock CPU to you or whatever. But generally it's not, you know, they say that they get 80 frames a second in a game and in reality you only get 45 or something like that. No, it's it's fairly roughly in the ballpark. That means that the cards, when they are finally on store shelves, are going to be very exciting for gamers. And I think whether you're going to buy the 460 for, let's say, LAN parties, that type of thing, with a 470 if you just want a card for now, especially true if you're waiting for, let's say, the, the ties, the 1080 ties to come down in price, or actually to be released more specifically, or the Vegas, you might want to get the 470, or whether you just want to delve into the 480 and spend like 200 US dollars and get an absolutely ridiculously powerful card for the price. I mean, let's face it, it's going to probably be faster than the R9 390 or maybe up to the 390X, which is an absolutely stonking card. No one could deny that. I think AMD made good this time, and it's obvious that they they chose these level of cards because that's what the average customer can go for. Essentially, now, we have to wait for official benchmarks. You know, so stick with us, of course. And... AMD need to start competing in the high end eventually, and NVIDIA, of course, will start encroaching into the low to mid range. So basically, while the two companies have had a bit of a ceasefire at the moment, six months from now, I have a feeling we're going to be in a very different story. But, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going because I still need to edit and I'm really tired, but um... Do the normal subscribe thing if you're interested, or comment, share. A lot of people have been messaging me actually recently because of E3, so keep going. You know where the contact details are, they are in the video description. But, take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Bye.